Hey y'all, here's some science of speed. Our Superflow all-wheel drive chassis dynamometer has been a critical tool in allowing us to test and quantify the gains that our products for the second generation NSX produce. With its hybrid powertrain, the NSX is one of the most difficult sports cars to test and produce reliable data on a dyno. There's no manual on how to test the performance of the powertrain of the NSX on a chassis dyno, so today I'm gonna to give you an overview of how Science of Speed performs our testing. So let's first review the things you'll need. First, of course, an all-wheel drive chassis dynamometer, preferably one with independent load sensors on the front and rear axles. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, a significant amount of airflow is required to keep the NSX temperature stable. We have over 76,000 CFM of airflow in this test cell. In addition to the exhaust ventilation fans, we have spot cooling on the front of the chassis, on the intercoolers, and on the engine itself. One of the most crucial areas for spot cooling is the intercoolers. These blowers are mounted on these custom-made stands, and even these blowers only replicate about 30 miles an hour of airflow. Unfortunately, most shops aren't gonna have this and you may need to improvise, but you will not get reliable measurements without cooling the intercoolers. Lastly, you'll need a diagnostic tool of reading and clearing all of the powertrain and chassis modules. We use the Optel MS906. However, many others are available, including aftermarket and the factory HDS tool to do this. The instructions we're gonna cover are for a dyno like ours, Yours may vary and your safety should be your top priority. Consult with your dyno manufacturer for instructions on how to properly secure the NSX to your dyno. We will be strapping down the chassis in eight locations, two at the front, two per side, and two in the rear. First, we have removed the rear brake ducts to access the rear lower control arm by removing these three M6 bolts per duct. Loop straps are placed around the rear lower control arm. Be careful on vehicles with the brake sensor wires along the control arm. Place the strap under the wire and around the control arm. Loop straps are placed around the lower front control arm in front of the brake duct. Next, remove the two body plugs per side from the underfloor structure. Tow hooks can be used to connect into these holes. The strap should not be very tight in these locations to avoid damaging the sheet metal. These side straps are only used to keep the car pointed straight and don't need to be very tight. Place rags between the hooks and the rocker panels to avoid any damage as needed. Next, remove the engine cover by pulling from the corner and lifting up. There are several hoses attaching to the intake manifold that can be used to monitor manifold or boost pressure. We're using this hose with a T-fitting to connect to the dyno's pressure sensor. Once the chassis is strapped down and secure with all fans turned on, we can begin testing. The NSX output from the engine and motors is highly dependent on a number of variables. It's important that we monitor at least these four variables, engine coolant temperature or ECT, inlet air temperature two or IAT2, state of charge, SOC, and the IMA battery temperature. To begin testing, we first place the drive mode into track using the central mode selector. Next, put the NSX into gear by pressing the door switch as you put it in manual shift mode. Bring the engine up to speed and drive under no load in third gear until the engine coolant temperature reaches 80 C. Once the engine is up to operating temperature, we can introduce load, 20% on our dyno, and bring engine speed up in third gear with approximately 75% accelerator pedal input. This induces a fault mode, which allows us to test in wide open throttle conditions without the VSA module limiting traction. It can take several sweeps to rev limiter to induce this. As you can see, once this occurs, various indicators on the dash turn on but can be ignored. This may revert the drive mode to sport at this point, but that is not an issue. Next, we will warm up the IMA high voltage batteries by doing at least four to six sweeps at wide open throttle 
recharging at 3,000 RPM or so after each pull. The electric motors will not give full output until the batteries reach about 30 degrees C. Continue these sweeps and recharge cycles until you see the temperature reach 30 degrees C and once reached, testing can be started. As you complete your test, monitor ECT, IET2, and IME state of charge. You want to make sure to not exceed 90 degrees C for ECT, 38 degrees C for IET2, and not less than 70 degrees state of charge for your results to be consistent and accurate. The most difficult will be inlet air temperature. If you're fighting this, then you need to increase airflow to the inner coolers and possibly the intake manifold. So compared to other non-hybrid vehicles, this electrified NSX adds a whole new dimension which really complicates producing accurate results, and that is the electric motor output. This is illustrated by reviewing third and fourth gear tests. As you can see in the graph, the output is drastically different between third gear in red and fourth gear in blue. This is because in fourth gear at 5,500 RPM and in later gears, motor output drastically diminishes. The results in third gear and fourth gear will not be the same. Now, in the past, Science of Speed has published in fourth gear, but recently we switched to third gear so that the power curve shape isn't influenced by the motor output decreasing. It results in graphs that better illustrate the output of the engine. Another reason why monitoring motor torque output is important is illustrated by this next graph. Here we have a test showing a nearly 15 horsepower gain in red. Awesome, what did we do to the engine? Well, it turns out nothing. As you can see in the next graph, the only difference was motor torque output. In the red graph, we began testing at 75% battery state of charge, and in the blue graph, it was 50%. The motor output is significantly affected by battery state of charge and battery temperature. You can view both of these parameters using a tool like the Autel under the powertrain module selection. All right, so the results are in. This NSX Type S produced around 580 wheel horsepower. Now this NSX has downpipes and exhausts, which have added about 20 horsepower over what a standard NSX Type S produces on this dyno in third gear. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Although the second generation NSX can be more complicated to test than a non-hybrid vehicle, it can be done and it lets you best understand the changes that you've made. For exciting new videos about what's possible with this platform, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. For more information on the products we offer to increase power of your NSX, check out the link above to scienceofspeed.com.